Good evening, everyone. My name is John Gennaro. I am the managing editor of Bolt from the Blue. I'm also a contributor to Voice of San Diego. I'm also an asshole on Twitter. I like to talk about the Chargers. I occasionally like to talk about the Padres. You can follow me on Twitter at John, J-O-H-N underscore Gennaro, G-E-N-N-A-R-O, or BFTB underscore Chargers is where all my Chargers thoughts are typically kept on Twitter. What else? Uh, so I was considering not doing this tonight because San Diego is burning and a lot of people are don't have internet, don't have houses at the moment or homes. Um, a lot of people don't know if they have a home to return to, and nobody's quite sure what's going to happen tomorrow or over the course of the next few days. All we know is that there are a lot of fires in San Diego. Uh, last I checked, there were still seven burning pretty much out of control all over the county. It is bad times for everyone. Um, so I considered not doing this. And... Uh, <clears throat> I asked Richard Wade if I should cancel. Most of you know Richard Wade if you hang out at Bolts in the Blue. Hold on, someone is complaining that I'm not here, so I want to make sure this is actually working. Most of you know Richard Wade. Uh, he posts frequently at Bolts in the Blue. He posts the daily links. He's also somewhat of a community manager sometimes referred to as the band hammer. Um, sometimes he's the person that I go to with decisions like this. And I asked him if he thought that I should cancel or postpone or something because of the fires, and his response was simply, don't make any fire jokes. So there will be no fire jokes tonight, and uh, hopefully we will be fine. Uh, I see there's already 29, 30 of you watching and growing by the second. Hello. Um, I usually, I don't know how this has happened, but uh, I, I've sort of come up with a, a traditional pattern, which is I, I rant and rave about something in the beginning, usually called a monologue when you do it right in the beginning. Um, I, I do a monologue to start one of these things off of something that I'm passionate about that nobody else is talking about yet. And then we move on and all hell breaks loose. I am going to do that, and I'm going to answer a lot of your questions at the same time. Uh, you guys are to the point where you are could seriously be locked up in a mental institution, obsessed with undrafted free agents. For some reason, you guys care more about the undrafted free agents than you do the Chargers first, second, third round picks. And maybe it's because you know about the first, second, third round picks, and you know what Mel, excuse me, Mel Kuyper has said about them, and Todd McShay has said about them, but you don't have any resources to really go to for the undrafted guys. Maybe that's it. Either way, you're freaking obsessed. I've gotten, I, I posted at about 1 o'clock that I was going to do this, so it's about six hours later, and I have at least 10 questions regarding undrafted free agents, which is just insanity. Um, but here's my monologue about a guy I thought was unquestionably the single best undrafted free agent available because I was certain he was going to get picked in the fourth round to the point where in the fifth round I was amazed that he was still there, was like, well, thank God because Tom Telesco traded away our fourth round pick. Now we can get this guy with our fifth didn't happen. By the time the sixth round, the seventh round rolled around, I wasn't watching anymore. I had a very, very busy weekend. Um, business stuff, Mother's Day stuff, friend stuff. That's why you saw a lot of Richard the past weekend and not so much of me. Chris Davis. Chris Davis is a cornerback that the Chargers signed as an undrafted free agent. Go around and look. Most places had him projected as a fourth-round, maybe fifth-round pick. 
Chris Davis. Dramatic pause. Is a potential starter in the league. There's no question about it. He is not far off from being an NFL starter. Actually, not that far behind Jason Verrett. And I would wager to say, at this point, coming out of college, 21 years old, is a younger, cheaper version of Richard Marshall with potential to grow. Chris Davis, most famously known for last year running back that hundred and whatever yard kick against Alabama with no time left on the clock to win the game for Auburn. Chris Davis is roughly the same size as Jason Verrett, um, but a little bit taller. He's 5'10", and he's thick, and he can hit. And he's not great for man coverage because, like Jason Verrett, a little short. 5'10's a little short when you're going up against some of these receivers that are 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". Some of them are 6'6 now, Ladarius Green. Um, <clears throat> so going up against the taller guys, he struggles. And man, great in zone, great tackler, tons of speed. Uh, struggled a little bit with injuries. Hell of a punt returner, hell of a kick returner. Uh, can play the nickel, can play outside, literally is, I, I, I'd wager to say at this point, as valuable as Steve Williams. And Steve Williams, I believe, was a third-round draft pick. So a major steal in the draft, major. Now, he struggles so much in man that there was this thought of, like, you can't take him if you play a lot of man defense. So that knocked out maybe half of the NFL from being interested in him. Uh, he also struggled with some injuries, specifically towards the end of his career, and I, I don't... I was looking up to see if he ran at the Combine. I don't think he ran at the Combine, because I couldn't find a 40 time for him. Uh, he probably ran at his pro day, but that's I was looking on the Combine results. Either way, I've watched a lot of tape on him. I love him. I kind of thought... I was telling a lot of people that I didn't really see the Chargers doing the whole doubling up I don't know where people came up with the phrase doubling up, but doubling up, where they would take a cornerback in the first and then take a cornerback later in the draft. Um, but if they were to do it, I was hoping it would be Chris Davis. Uh, he also sort of... It, he wouldn't be a bad comparison with Marcus Gilchrist either. Um, so I love Chris Davis. I'm happy he's on the Chargers. I will go so far as to say if he can remain healthy through all of the preseason, I would be surprised if he didn't make the roster, the 53-man roster. Granted, staying healthy is a, a fool's game in the NFL, especially as a rookie, but he is, uh, in, in this scheme, hell of a football player, hell of a fit, and I could easily see him making the roster. Okay, so that's my rant. That's my favorite undrafted free agent for the Chargers. Um, and I, if we had to start the season with him as a starter on the outside with Jason Verrett on the other, I mean, you're playing a lot of zone. You're going to need a pass rush. But both of those guys right off the bat can handle it. That's how good they are. And that's how good Chris Davis is. And that's how good that signing is. And I would really love to know the reasons that people were using to not pick him in the fifth, sixth, seventh round, except I could probably figure them out myself, uh, which is in those rounds, in the, the later, specifically the last two, three rounds of the NFL draft, usually you're picking projects. You're picking high-risk, high-reward guys. Chris Davis is never going to be Darrell Rebus. Um, but he can be a better version of Richard Marshall. He can be an adequate starter. That He can be an adequate starter in a zone defense that offers plenty of run support. Those guys are safe picks, and they don't usually get picked in the fifth, fifth sixth, or seventh round because they're not really high risk, high reward. They're you know sometimes high risk, mediocre reward, and that's kind of what this is uh, because of his injury history. But... 
that would be my only guess as to why he wasn't taken, unless he had some sort of off-the-field issue that I don't know about, because everything I saw on tape, everything I read about him, everything I heard about him said a third-rounder that has, or a fourth-rounder that has potential to start in year two. You know, uh, if you put him in his own defense, he'll be fine. You know, so I, I that's going to be my guy to keep an eye on. Oh, with the addition of Atachu, that's how it's pronounced, right? Atachu, how do you see the outside linebacker rotation working? Is there any chance Ingram moves to inside linebacker? Who's been pushing that lately? Someone has. I think it's Richard. I think Richard has been asking people on Twitter what they feel of Ingram at inside linebacker. Um, and there was a really good question that, that would help me to answer this. Here it is. So in the previous thread, the one I opened up at 1 o'clock, uh, a, a fro among few, who is usually at these things but apparently driving to L.A. today, asked me this question, and it's long, so I'm going to take a drink first. Pinky up. There has been talk, notably from Jerome, about the idea of moving Melvin Ingram to defensive tackle in a rotation with Kendall Reyes and Corey Legit and Lawrence Guy. While having Jared Johnson and Dwight Franey start at outside linebacker with a rotation consisting of Jeremiah Tachu, Larry English, and Tariq, Tariq Williams, or one of the other depth outside linebacker guys, and even Donald Butler rotates in at outside linebacker on plays where he isn't the inside linebacker, while Donald Butler, Manti Teo, and Cavell Connor rotate in and out of the inside linebacker position. Would that make more sense than trying to get Ingram and Itachu to possibly share backup snaps at outside linebacker? If not, what would you like the front seven to look like at the start of the year? Okay. <clears throat> Here's where AJ Smith used to do this. Tom Telesco is doing this now. I think all good general managers do this. You build depth planning for injury. I can tell you what I would like the front seven to look like at the start of the year, okay? Uh, I would like nose tackle, either um, Sean Lissamore or the, the kid they just drafted out of Arkansas State or whatever. Uh, Corey Legit, Kendall Reyes, Donald Butler, Manti Teo, uh, Melvin Ingram, and Jared Johnson are your front seven on the, the snap number one of the first game of the season. However, injuries are a thing that happens. So there's a good chance that one, two, three of those guys are going to get injured. Last year we had, and, and you know, a couple years ago we ended up in the same situation, starting just anybody at outside linebacker. We had Reggie Walker was one of the more – consistent outside linebackers this team had last year. So before Ingram came back and, and was awesome. So my guess is from that first group of four, Dwight Freeney, Jared Johnson, Melvin Ingram, Jeremiah Tachu, one of them at least is going to get hurt, if not during the preseason, during training camp, early on in the season. Maybe not for the year, but, you know, for a couple of weeks. At which point... Snaps for the number four guy go way up. Snaps for the number three guy go way up. Um, and at this point, Dwight Freeney and, and uh, Atachu are just pass rushers that can't really do anything else. I mean, Atachu's athletic, but he's a pass rusher. That's all he is. And, you know, and maybe he'll be more next year, but rookie year, he's mostly going to be a pass rusher like Dwight Freeney. So that's why I would pick Ingram over Freeney. That's why I would pick Jared Johnson over Freeney because on the – First snap of the first play, they're probably handing off the ball and running it up the gut. So you don't need your pass rushers in there. So I know where Jerome is coming from. Melvin Ingram's most valuable tool in college was the fact that he could play just about everywhere. He played defensive tackle. He played defensive end. He played some linebacker. 
there's this thought process of he could play outside linebacker with the Chargers. He could play inside. He could play defensive end in a 4-3. He could play defensive tackle in a 4-3. He could maybe play defensive end in a 3-4 because he's almost big enough and probably strong enough, and they would still have to account for his quickness. So the idea is you move him around and you find mismatches and whatever. I get where Jerome's coming from. I do. Um... That is a lot of changes to a defense, especially a defense that's coming off a really bad year that kept its coach. Uh, that, to me, says they believe in Pagano. Pagano is not exactly going to tear up his playbook and start all over again. So my guess is the front seven that, that I originally said, the, essentially the same front seven as, that they wanted to start with last year minus Cam Thomas is what they're going to aim for. However, they have um, backups everywhere now. They got an okay depth at defensive end. Uh, at nose tackle, they at least have two guys instead of one. Inside linebacker, they got plenty of depth. And yeah, Melvin Ingram could be a guy there and maybe even put him again above Andrew Gatchkar, but I think he's much more effective on the outside. And at outside, you have at least four guys that you're pretty comfortable with being starters. Some of them with flaws, and they'll come off the bench and be specialty guys. But the idea that you pick a front seven right now and say, oh, we got to change our defense because this is going to be our front seven. Imagine doing that. Imagine you go into week one and you say, okay, the defensive tackles are going to be Melvin Ingram, Kendall Reyes, and Corey Legion. Uh, the outside linebackers are going to be Jared Johnson and Dwight Franey. Uh, Jeremiah Tachu and Larry English are the backups coming off the bench. Uh, the inside linebackers are Manti but Man or Donald Butler, Manti Teo, and Cavell Connor rotating in and out. What happens when Dwight Freedy gets hurt? Do they go, oh, just kidding? Or does Larry English then become the primary backup at outside linebacker? You see? So... As much as I like the idea of it, the roster's not set up for it. It's something you could do if the team won two games last year, but the fact that they went to the playoffs and won a playoff game, you kind of have to go with what worked last year. Why am I so much better looking online than in person? Says someone who's never met me in person, I don't think. The answer is... The answer is you're wrong. This weird lighting that I have going on here makes me look like a fucking ghost. And in person, I don't look like a ghost. However, in person, I do look shorter than I do look on the internet. On the internet, you have no idea how tall I am. And the camera's actually looking up at me a little bit. So it almost looks like I'm the height of an average human being. I think Charger fans love undrafted free agents because the Bolts have a history of playing them more so than other teams. Yeah, okay. That's fine. There's a War Eagle. Steve Williams is fifth. Why do I always think he's a third rounder? That's right. Third round of the last year was Keenan Allen. Damn, that's a good third round pick. By the way... For someone who asked earlier about hand size, uh, I think this was in response to Tevin Reese. I think Tevin Reese has really small hands. Keenan Allen had the largest hands among wide receivers in the draft last year, and it's not close. Like, hold on, I found a list. His hand size is over 10 inches, 10.08 inches. Those hands are fucking gigantic. The next largest. Oh, wait, no, they're not the largest. Someone else. Marcus Davis, 10.28, but he's way down this weird list. Rodney Smith. Damn it, this list was supposed to be organized by hand size. Ignore everything I said in the last minute. Anyway, huge hands. Gigantic hands. Enormous hands. These other guys that had big hands are not very good. So no, hand size apparently doesn't mean anything, unless you're keen to know. They certainly help him, though. Does Itachi make it so that the Chargers might cut English or Tariq? It's 
Someone says, I'd rather see Kaiser gone if Tariq is close enough. See, this is all going to be settled with injuries. I mean, okay, yes, if Jared Johnson, Dwight Freeney, Melvin Ingram, Jeremiah Tachu, Larry English, Tariq Williams, and Thomas Kaiser, seven guys, if they're all healthy all through training camp and the entire preseason, and not one of them ends up going on IR like has happened in each of the last 100,000 years, yeah, some of them will get cut. Um, and it will probably depend on training camp battles, preseason performance, things like that. I mean, you can sit there and say, oh, the Chargers should cut English. If Larry English comes out and has four sacks in four preseason games, they're sure as shit not going to cut Larry English, and you're not going to want them to. So position battles and whether or not someone's going to make the cut with something like that is totally dependent upon preseason performance, how they perform in training camp, in their battles, if they're given a battle, and health. It is almost entirely dependent upon health. So those are seven guys. I'd be surprised if five of them made it to the end of camp. And those five are probably all going to be kept on the team because you need five outside linebackers. Oh, you guys, I'm getting to the... Atachu. Uh, Isn't that what I've been saying? Um, okay. What do you think? Why did Chris Harris drop so much? Um... I have no idea how I sort of answered. We'll just go right past that. Let's call him Choo Choo for Itachu. I like just calling him Achu. Like, I came really close after they drafted him of grabbing a picture of Dave Chappelle from Robin Hood Men in Tights and throwing that up on Twitter with no comment whatsoever to see how long it would take for someone to get what I was trying to do there. And I feel like it would have taken five seconds because Achu is a really good nickname for him. Uh, Tay Acha. Don't think so. Hmm. Okay, someone obviously missed my monologue and just showed up and said, do you think there's a chance Chris Davis makes the roster and what would his role be? Um, instead of wasting everyone else's time, I'm going to just tell you once this is over to go back and hit play again so it plays a recorded version and you get the first 10 minutes where I told you that Chris Davis is going to make the roster, said he might even start, possibly, and I wouldn't be mad at it. Um, as far as who will be the kick returner this year, I do have some names I want to throw out at you. Chris Davis is one of them. Uh, you guys probably saw me earlier saying, you know, I hope Tevin Reese can get a chance returning kicks. Um, here's an interesting name I would like to throw at you. So... Charger fans, in addition to loving undrafted free agents, we just we love players that like aren't superstars for some reason. We also love our special teamers. Love them. Kasim Osgood, loved him. Daryl Stuckey, love him. Doesn't matter that he was drafted in like the third round and supposed to be a starting safety. Ah, he's an awesome special teamer. We love him. I think. And this actually might be a perfect time because they have enough depth in front of him now. And I think there's uh, – I think it's the last year of his contract, so he's not going to say no to anything. I think this could be a good year to see Marcus Gilchrist just do a lot of things that he hasn't done before. Um, I don't think he's going to get a lot of time at safety. I think the only way he gets a lot of time at cornerback – is if Chris Davis gets injured or doesn't pan out because they're too similar player. Uh, Marcus Gilchrist, I believe, was a punt returner and possibly even a kick returner in college and real good at it. And I would have no issues whatsoever pointing Marcus Gilchrist towards special teams and saying, you and Stucky go beat the shit out of people. And, uh, by the way, we also want you to return kicks. Punts would be a little shaky, because with punts, it's kind of more important to have good hands. I don't know how good his hands actually are, but I would love to see Marcus Gokers get a chance returning kicks. 
And I think he's at that point where his options are going to be in the last year of his contract with the Chargers, uh, which, by the way, let me look that up before I say that a third time. Um, if he's in the last year of his contract with the Chargers and his options are sitting on the bench or returning kicks, I think he will gladly return kicks. And I think he'd be good at it. So that's who I would like to see get a chance. But kick returner right now, since they don't have a Devin Harris and they don't really have a Richard Goodman who's just on the roster to return kicks, I think they'll battle it out. You know, they'll, they'll give everyone a chance and, you know, they'll pick their one or two guys and if those one or two guys get hurt or get injured, then they'll let Danny Woodhead do it again. I don't know. Uh, my Marcus Gilchrist contract information is taking forever to load, so I'll probably pop up with that information in like 10 minutes and be like, oh, by the way, it just showed up. If anyone else finds it before me, just comment and I'll show... Really hope Keenan Allen has a season that matches his rookie year or better. I doubt he will. I mean, that's a really hard thing to do. It's a really hard thing to do. You know what they say about guys with huge hands. Yes, Ladarius Green has gigantic hand size because he's a gigantic human being. Marcus Gilchrist, in the last year of his contract, I was right. Second round pick. Pick... 50th overall, picked with the exact same pick as Jeremiah Tachu. Granted, I do not believe A.J. Smith moved up to get him. And Gilchrist, what, started two games as a cornerback? And, like, six or eight last year as a pretty poor safety before they started replacing him. Has never really done anything in a return game. Like... There's a lot of bashing that goes on for guys like Buster Davis, Larry English, and granted, they can't stay healthy, but no one's ever busted on Marcus Gilchrist. Like, he was, okay, he played a lot of nickel corner, like, in 2012, and he was not the worst nickel corner in the history of the world, but second-round pick. I mean, he was picked... I believe the same year as Sharice Wright, and immediately A.J. Smith was like, these are our starting corners of the future. Sharice Wright, you could argue, kind of lived up to his billing because I think he was a third or fourth round pick. Gilchrist has been a huge disappointment with that pick. Just huge. So... <laughs> And apparently this page allows you to comment or review a certain player. The only review on Marcus says, Marcus is not only a quality football player, he is also a follower of Jesus. Now, hold on, I need to pause because this is in all caps. I'm going to need a second. We need to read this in all caps. Marcus is not only a quality football player, he is also a follower of Jesus Christ. We need more of this caliber player in all sports. See? So maybe he was worth that second round pick. Oh, nice. Someone posted the picture of a chew in the draft thread. Glad to know I'm not creative. <sighs> hey, Mikey, what's up? Bubblegum, sunflower seeds, or chew? Your preference. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to tell you something that I haven't told you in a long time. I'm going to tell you something. So I got a new job about six months ago. I got a job uh, working on the website for Fox Sports Radio. Big time, national sports radio. Um, I do nothing with the radio side of it. It is all just the website. Just total nerd shit, because that's kind of what I am. And it's fun. It is totally fun. So they got a huge sponsorship from this company called Biggs, who makes sunflower seeds. Biggs Sunflower Seeds. I mean, just massive. Like, a, the biggest sponsor I believe they've ever had. And Biggs is a fairly new company who is open to suggestion. So 
people from Fox Sports Radio, including Jay Moore and other people that host our shows, will literally call up and be like, hey, make this flavor. And they will make it, and then they'll send like 30 boxes of it to our offices. And so there are boxes everywhere of these sunflower seeds with the best flavors. They have bacon flavored, they have dill pickle flavor, they have Frank's Buffalo red hot sauce flavor. They're ridiculous. So, to answer your question, I, from those choices you gave me, have always been a gum guy, a bubble gum guy. In the last few months, I have been so, my life is just surrounded by these sunflower seeds in flavors that I absolutely adore that I'm kind of turning into a sunflower seed guy. Kind of. Still love bubblegum. Not a chew guy. Never have been a chew guy. Probably never will be a chew guy. I'm a cigarette guy every now and then. Cigar guy, even less now and then. Uh, but seeds are, are coming back, man. Big way. That was like a weird pitch, like a sponsorship thing, and it's not. I just had to tell someone that, like, my life when I go to work is just totally just seeds everywhere. Awesome. Like, you see, like, the, the, like the cute girls, the old ladies, like, the weird, like, janitors are walking around. Everyone. Everyone's got a bag of seeds, and there's, like, <laughs> and it's so – you just walk into people's office, and, like, the last thing you would ever expect them to be doing is just chewing on seeds at their desk, and that's what – it's so weird. But it's awesome. So sunflower seeds coming back, man. Stucky was a fourth rounder, not a third rounder. Thoughts on Michael Flacco? His last name intrigues me more than anything. Um, he went to some tiny college that I don't know, like New Haven? Hold on. New Haven. I couldn't even tell you where New Haven is. My guess is Connecticut. It sounds like a Connecticut college, uh, but couldn't tell you. Never seen anything on him ever. Uh, if Brad Sorensen beats out Kellen Clemens, does he have a legit future? Someone responds with, Sorensen has a legit chance as the next big star, and then says, in time. Okay. And then says, I'm an ex-QB, so I think his throwing motion and reads are very good. Okay. I love Brad Sorensen. You guys know I love Brad Sorensen. You guys know that last year I was enamored with Brad Sorensen, and I believe at several times said, if Phillip Rivers goes down, the team can survive with Brad Sorensen as quarterback. Let me tell you, Mr. Blonde Bomber knows, who, by the way, I always refer to Eminem as the Blonde Bomber because yeah, I'm weird, and so every time you pop up, you make me think of Eminem, and I just imagine it's Eminem like, Tweeting Charger things at me. Um, I'm going to look up Brad Sorensen and tell you that he is 26. So he's like four years older than what he should be as a rookie. Actually, I thought he was older than that. Um, Rivers is, what, 31? Philip Rivers... Rivers is 32. So Rivers has probably three more years left. Being honest, most quarterbacks, you don't really want them playing past 35, although I think that's where Brady and Manning are right now, and they're still doing fine. So yes, possible for him to play more than three, but let's just average out quarterbacks and say Rivers quits when he's 35, 36. Sorensen at that point would be 29. I don't know that you really want to go, you're the future of our franchise, Mr. 30-year-old quarterback that has never started or played in a regular season game. Here are the keys. So while I think Brad Sorensen could find a home somewhere else and work, him way up, work his way up a roster... He could also be the next Cleo Lemon, work his way up a roster, and then just disappear forever. Um, or he could be the next Charlie Whitehurst. You never know. But I'm saying by the time Rivers is finished, Sorensen is going to be too old to hand him the keys to the franchise. You do not hand the keys to your franchise to a 30-year-old guy that has never done anything in the NFL. People will freaking riot. The only time that has ever worked in the history of the NFL 
was when the Texans got Matt Schaub. And I think at that point, Matt Schaub was like 26. So even then, the fans were pissed. So as much as I love Brad Sorensen, and I really do, and I'm going to enjoy watching him in the preseason again, uh, and I think he's great for Frank Reich, I don't see him as the future quarterback after Phillip Rivers. Sorry. Do you think McCoy's conservative play calling will be similar this year to second-year coaches loosen the straps a little? Was it McCoy or Wiz? Pretty sure it was Wiz. Conserv oh, okay. I thought you were talking about like the whole fourth down thing. I still, I, I don't think McCoy's going to change as far as fourth downs and punting when he should be going for it. I don't think he'll ever change in that regard because he's too much like John Fox. Um, as far as just, like, running it three times from the one-yard line and all that stuff, um, I, that'll depend on Frank Reich. That'll depend on Frank Reich and, and how good he is right out of the gate. Because how good he is right out of the gate, you know, him and Mike McCoy can go way back, and Mike McCoy can totally believe in Frank Reich, but if Frank Reich comes out and it's just not working... Mike McCoy is going to take a little bit of the control because he doesn't want the season to go down the drains because Frank can't figure it out fast enough. At the same time, if Frank comes right out of the gate on fire, then Mike McCoy will totally be like, hey, look, whatever you're doing is working. Don't let me get in the, oh, you want to throw downfield? Throw downfield. Dude, go crazy. You want to throw four times from the two-yard line? Go crazy. Whatever you think works, Frank. Right now, everything you're doing is working. So I don't think it has anything to do with anything except how quickly Frank Reich finds success. End of this upcoming season. Do we re-sign Ryan Matthews or Danny Woodhead or neither or both? <clears throat> I don't know, like the season's going to determine that, you know? If they have the same exact season that they just had, like just a, a second time, then, which is impossible because that means Donald Brown does nothing more than what Ronnie Brown did. Um, but my guess is Matthews has gone and Woodhead stays. That would be my guess. Because Woodhead at that point is, is going to be reaching that point where he's... Oh, let's see. Looking up a lot of ages today. Woodhead. Danny Woodhead is 29. So he'll be 30. He's 5'8". Danny will be on the down slope. You know, he'll be at that part where Darren Sproles was, where the Saints were like, yeah, we don't really want to pay you, and found their way out. So I think Woodhead will be cheap-ish. Not, you know, probably a little bit more than his current contract, which was super cheap. Um, but there's really not a lot of reason to bring back Ryan Matthews when you have Donald Brown, and you're paying Donald Brown as much as you are. So my guess is they re-signed Danny Woodhead. But, you know... The season can change it. Ryan Matthews wins the MVP this year. You got to bring him back. Ryan Matthews is a Super Bowl MVP. You got to bring him back. I thought Mike Herman was the next big star. You and me both. Mike Herman was just a great story and had so much potential. He was just a freak of nature, just a big, strong kid who could run, who had video of him playing against midgets, and it was awesome. So I just wanted him to, exceed, to succeed. So I'm sure this has been talked about before, but I was wondering, I've heard McCoy say that people have to earn their spot on the field. So if Watt goes into training camp and shows out and Clary struggles, does that force the Chargers to give him the pay cut we all think he deserves and start Watt? Obviously the depth is necessary, and Clary's supposed to be a great guy in the locker room and on the field. So you want him just not for the price he's at now. Okay, Mark West, I'm going to quiz you 
and everyone else who's watching. I'm not going to wait for an answer, though, because you guys are, I don't know, a minute behind me, and I don't want to sit here for a minute. Maybe I'll ask and drink a beer and see if anyone's answered. <clears throat> so last year, Mike McCoy said, going into training camp, everyone has to earn their spot. We're going to play the best five guys on the offensive line. Who's at left tackle? We're going to play the best five guys on the offensive line. Who's at right guard? We're going to play the best five guys on the offensive line. Was that actually the best five guys on the offensive line? Follow-up question. Was there anyone who earned a spot, starting spot last year, anywhere on the Chargers defense that wasn't the starter at the start of training camp? I will drink. I will wait for a minute. And I'll look through the rest of these comments. Chris Davis apparently injured his hamstring before the combine. And at his pro day, ran a 4.55 40-yard dash. So with a 40 and a half inch vertical. My goodness. So he's a slightly slower version of Jason Verrett, who's slightly bigger and probably better at tackle. There we go. Blonde Bomber also hooked on seeds. Okay. So, Mikey's response to my question is, I think no. Last year, Keenan Allen apparently had a really good training camp. He didn't get onto the field until Malcolm went down. They basically had to play him. Correct! Mikey gets a gold star. Here's me giving you a gold star, Mikey. Right on your face. Um, everyone continues to quote this. The best five guys. Only the, be the best guys are the guys that are the ones that are going to play. We knew. Everyone knew in training camp. You remember, during training camp, we had a weekly post where Jerome broke down film and showed you how bad of a guard Jeremy Clary is. Just awful. Just an awful guard. And he played in front of Johnny Troutman. He played in front of Rich Warnberger. And there was no reason to because he was terrible. Just absolutely atrocious. Vincent Brown got way more playing time than he deserved last year. Do you guys recall when we were screaming because Vincent Brown was getting zero catches per game and the one half of a quarter when they had to bring in Ajira Tutu as a wide receiver, he caught the game-winning touchdown. And yet Ajira Tutu never got back into the game as a wide receiver or ever for the rest of the year. So Mike McCoy can say all he wants about the best five guys will play on the offensive line. The best guys will play. We're going to have position battles, and the best guy is going to win that battle. He's going to win that job. Bullshit. It is made up bullshit garbage to try and get his players to play hard and to try and make the fans feel like the 22 guys on the team, every single one of them earned their spot during training camp. It's not true. I will go find the week one depth chart from the preseason and show you that it is the same depth chart they had in week one of the regular season. Sands a few injured players being replaced. So the idea that Watt could come into training camp and out hustle Jeremy Clary and win that spot, and then Jeremy Clary will be cut and we'll take a. No! They've decided. If Jeremy Clary gets injured, it is the best thing that could happen to this team right now. Actually, hold on, let me take that back. Let me, let me, let me walk that back a little bit. I'm not rooting for an injury to Jeremy Clary. He's just very obviously not the best guard to be starting at right guard 
and yet he's going to be number one in the depth chart in week one of the preseason. He's going to be number one depth chart during the regular season unless he gets injured. No one's going to beat anyone else out in training camp. It's not going to happen. No one's going to beat anyone else out unless there's an injury. You know, you're not going to see Tevin Reese play so good that Malcolm Floyd gets bumped down to the third or fourth wide receiver. You're just not. If Keenan Allen has the single worst training camp and preseason a starting wide receiver has ever had, do you know what position he will be on the depth chart at the end of the preseason, going into week one of the regular season? He will be the number one wide receiver on the depth chart. So, no, Chris Harris, Chris Watt will not beat out Jeremy Clary. Neither will Chris Harris. Will Jason Barrett's speed fool some of the younger quarterbacks we face this year, like on out routes and comebacks? Maybe EJ Manuel and Atkins will struggle. Who is Atkins? Is that the name of a quarterback? I'm, I'm totally serious. Is that the name of a quarterback that we play this year? Who the hell is... I'm, I'm doing a search right now. Atkins QB. Geno Atkins. Gino Atkins the no Gino Atkins is the defensive end. Who the hell is Atkins? I I can't answer your question until I know who Atkins is. I'm sorry. What are your thoughts on how Telesco drafted? I believe Tom Telesco drafted well for the San Diego Chargers. You know I. There are those that believe that picks in the first four rounds are very valuable, especially those in the second, third, and fourth, because that is where you find your starters. There are those that believe that the first 50 picks of the draft are significantly more valuable, because that's where you find superstars. So... Tom Telesco sacrificed a potential average starting player for a potential superstar. And I don't know that I would have done the same. I don't know that I love that trade. I don't know that I'm ever going to love that trade. But... Oh, he meant Geno Smith. Okay, that's what I thought, but I didn't want to assume. Um... So, you know, I like the draft. There's nothing wrong with it. Jason Verrett was the best pick you were going to get at 25. If Let's assume, you know, that, that Atachu is... Uh, let, let's not factor in the fourth-round pick. I think he's a fine pick at 50. I think he has the potential to be a stud pass rusher, and there's really not a lot of downside to him. Um, Chris Watt, the more I've learned, the more I've watched, the more I've read Jerome's post. Uh, seems like a really solid pickup. And the guys after that are are fine. I mean, Carithers or Carithers, I think it's Carithers, um, you know, has good potential. He's probably not going to be a starter year one, but most nose tackles aren't. But he's, he's got potential to be a decent starter down the line, which is more than you could say for most fifth-round picks. Uh, Jesus, who did they get in the sixth round? This is going to bother me. It wasn't Tevin Reese. He was the seventh rounder. Hold on. Hold on! I'm blaming the fact that I'm done with this beer on the fact that I can't remember who the sixth round pick is. The sixth round pick is, oh yeah, Marion Grice. I always forget that because that's such an unnecessary pick and he's going to sit behind everybody this year. He's going to do nothing this year. Nothing. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if Chris Davis made the team and Marion Grice did not. I could very easily see Marion Grace making the practice squad, though. So, I mean, that's a guy that needs a huge preseason to make the team. That's why I always forget him. Tevin Reese, I think, has a very good chance. 
Anyway. Um, so, you know, solid draft. Yeah, fourth round pick doesn't exist. The sixth round pick, obviously, I think is a bit of a throwaway. Uh, but, you know, you get five solid picks, five guys that all have the potential to be the starters. I mean, not in year one, maybe not in year two, but in year three. Really can't ask for much more than that. Uh, it's better than a lot of drafts we saw from A.J. Smith. Okay, so back to your question. Uh, will Jason Verrett's speed fool some of the younger quarterbacks we face this year, like on out routes and comebacks? Hopefully. Um, yeah, hopefully. A day wasn't the starter at the start of training camp. He wasn't the starter in week one of the regular season either. That was Marcus Gilchrist, even though he was terrible. Marshall wasn't a starter. Wasn't the starter in week one of the regular season. What I'm telling you guys is that the regular, the preseason and the training camp does not change who the starters are. You guys are going, oh, well, this guy started at the end of the year. Yeah, Marshall started at the end of the year because Derek Cox was so fucking bad. But week one of the preseason, it was Derek Cox and Sharice Wright. Week one of the regular season, it was Derek Cox and Sharice Wright. That means the training camp and preseason are irrelevant when it comes to training camp battles under Mike McCoy. Listen. Your predictions on our rookie stats go entirely dependent upon interviews, interviews, entirely dependent upon injuries, and I'd rather not. Which quarterback would you have drafted in the first round? Like, which quarterback do I like the best? Uh, Johnny Mantell, actually. My honest opinion on how many rookies from this class will start. I think it's Jason Barrett, and that's it. Most people thought Max Starks would win the right tackle job. <sighs> people certainly weren't counting on Dunlap. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, you're talking left tackle. Right tackle, we all assumed it would be DJ Fluker. Um, left tackle, they signed Dunlap. We thought it was Dunlap, and then they signed Max Starks, and we went, oh, no, it's going to be Max Starks! And then Max Starks turned out to be garbage. So, yes, before the Max Starks signing, we thought it was going to be Dunlap. If you go back and you look, the first day of training camp, because Mike McCoy was all oh, the best five players, the best five players, the first day of training camp, you can find these tweets, but they're a million years old. Well, they're a year old. A million days old. Or 260. The first day of training camp, the offensive line went Dunlap, Reinhardt, Hardwick, Clary, Fluker. And there was this, oh, well, that's the first lineup they're trying. Then they're going to try other ones. They never did. At some point, they tried Starks at left tackle. They tried a little bit of Starks at right tackle, and then they realized he sucked. And then it was right back to that first lineup. You guys seriously want me to go back and find the depth chart from week one of the preseason? I will do it. Hey, hey! Mikey got a gold star from uh, the cute girl from Glee. Congratulations. What did I miss? John seems pissed, which is pretty much on par for this phase of generally speaking. Not really pissed off, just being loud and exciting. You did miss me yell in all caps. It was fun. Man, that game at Kansas City was so much fun to watch. Yes, it was. Our best bet for getting rid of Clary is that they are waiting for June 1st to cut him. Hard to argue with that. I think they... they if they wait until June 1st, they can split his cap penalty, something like that. Preseason week one depth chart. Oh, wrong year. Uh, camp battles offensive line from last preseason. That must have been, yeah, that's after they signed Starks, but they didn't sign Starks until... Pretty late, no? 
That says July 30th, so I guess not. Starks, Reinhardt, Hardwick, Clary, Fluker, and Dunlap was the first behind Starks. So I don't think Dunlap necessarily beat out Max Starks as much as Max Starks was just absolute gar garbage. Hey, we got a newbie! Uh, and he watched footage today. Let's get his scouting reports from Bolt Up or Shut Up. Oh my god, I'm going to hate you already. Jason Verrett, love his ability to mirror receivers unless he was burned by a great move. He didn't give up much separation unless the receiver pushed off, which makes me hopeful he will draw some offensive pass interference calls. Not likely. Matachu really likes to... Really seems like a feast or famine guy, not ready to start, not likely to make a big impact, but will probably shine in a couple of games. He's a speed pass rusher without much else, but those guys can survive. Carithers, great at standing up double teams, but I thought he would be better at pushing the pocket when only facing a single lineman for how strong he is. That's the reason he was available there in the fifth round. Grice, great nose for the end zone. I don't think his preference for chop blocking is going to work at the next level when facing better athletes. Uh, I hate that great nose for the end zone thing, but it's really hard to deny with him. But he's just doesn't have the strength to survive in the NFL. <laughs> I'm not even going to read that. Richard just embarrassed someone. Any chance Andre Johnson comes to San Diego? We answered this the other day. Someone please provide that man with a link about why we cannot afford Andre Johnson and there is literally no reason for Houston to trade him to us. Andre Johnson is going to the Patriots. God, I hope not. Oh, now people are talking about the Week 17 game against the Chiefs. That game was not so much fun until the last seconds of the fourth quarter. Then it was just stupid fun. Okay, why the hell would a coach like McCoy not start his best players? That doesn't make any sense. <sighs> because some guys value certain things above preseason and practice reps, you know. They probably looked at Jeremy Clary and went, well, he was a pretty good right tackle, so... He should be a above average right guard. We know he looks like he sucks, but he'll figure it out. He's only been playing this for like three weeks. He never did. That would be my guess. I still think Clary is better than Troutman and probably a rookie Watt at this point. No, this is an unpopular opinion. Yeah, Clary's Pretty garbage. Is Cream doing a preseason power ranking consensus? As soon as they come out, absolutely. That's the every time I ask Cream, like, hey, when are the power rankings coming out? He's like, uh, as soon as they come out. Like he has to wait for other people to put theirs out before he can do anything with them. He can't just make them up. I mean it's a consensus. He, he takes the temperature. He can't just make it up. Best is subjective when it comes to Mike McCoy. Yes, absolutely. Okay, guys, it is 8 o'clock. I've been doing this for an hour. Uh, San Diego is probably still on fire. So we'll do the, uh, the money round. I'll give you guys 15 minutes to ask me absolutely anything and everything, and I will answer them all 100% honestly if I can. Uh, it can be about the Chargers, it can be about the Padres, you want to talk NBA, we can talk NBA, it can be about me, it can be about 
life. You can ask me anything, and I will answer all of it. And you have until 8.15, which, you know, it's probably going to be like 8.13 for you guys because you're running behind me. But by all means, send in your best questions at this very moment. We will call it something better than lightning round, even though lightning round would just be so fitting. Screw it. We're calling it the lightning round. I may need to get another beer for it, though. In a sense, best has already been decided no matter what happens throughout training camp preseason. Yes. June 1 only matters if he has years left on his contract. Cutting Clary after June 1 does not mean his dead money hits next year. Furthermore, we save by cutting him, so no reason not to cut him now. I'm good with cutting him now, especially now they have Watt. I mean, I was I, – I think I said in the last one of these videos that a good reason to wait on cutting Clary is to see if you can find someone to replace him in the draft. And as soon as you can, then you cut him. That way you're not creating a big hole on your roster. So – I mean, no real reason to cut him today. You can wait until, I don't know, mini camp and have him groom the kid a little bit. Um, but, you know, you obviously don't want to wait too long. Still got the girlfriend slash fiance. No. Lightning round is easily the best name for it. Lightning round it is. So I'm hoping that Frenny just comes in on third downs or passing situations. I feel Ingram deserves to start next season. You and everybody else. I mean... Look, the team went like six and one with him last year, so obviously. Have you ever updated the map where it shows where all the BFTB fans are globally? Updated? No. Um, actually, I want to do it over again. Now that we have way more people, it's still a fun idea, but you just got to do it all over again. You can't just keep updating the old map. Some people leave and. The whole thing was like way too open and easy to add things, so some people just add themselves like 600 times. Um, yeah. Ever played Bioshock Infinite? No, and actually I sold my gaming PC a couple weeks ago, and my PS3 is sitting in a box back there. I'm thinking about selling it too, so chances of me ever playing it are getting smaller and smaller. What do you think of Ingram taking snaps from Manti Teo? I referenced you being infatuated with this idea earlier. I don't love it, and my argument was this, and I know it's one that sort of plays to what you believe, Richard, which is Ingram making a giant switch like that, all of a sudden moving inside. You sort of have to change most of the defense. And you're asking Pagano, who had a really shitty job last year and did a really shitty job the year before, actually, too, um, to make giant changes to his defense doesn't sound like the best idea in the world to me. I also think you take away a lot of what Ingram does best there. However, in a, like a third and ten situation... I think I'd be okay with it. Like, you could get Freeney, and this is probably what you're talking about. Third and ten, you get Freeney and Atacha, or you just line them up on the outsides, and they're just going to kill the quarterback, like meet at the quarterback, whatever the phrase is. And Ingram is out there in the middle because you don't know if he's coming or not. You know he could be effective if he's coming, but you know he could also drop back or play man or whatever. So, yes, Ingram can play the – what did Ron Rivera used to call that position? Joker? Ingram could definitely play the Joker better than Manti Teo could, so yes. Has you Have you ever been to Ireland? No, I would love to go to Ireland. I have friends that spent significant time there. Um, but no, I went to France and Belgium about a year ago, but that's the only place I've ever been in Europe. How many bugs is too many bugs in your drink? Richard says three. I will tell this story. So, Mr. Richard Wade, 
did such a wonderful job covering me for the boring half of the NFL draft last weekend that I told him I owed him two drinks while I was in San Diego. We met up. We got drinks. We actually got three of the exact same drinks. Maker's Mark 46. Not a bad little bourbon. My drink was delicious and perfect. Our other friend's drink, also delicious, also perfect. Richard, after taking one, possibly two sips of his drink, goes to take a second or third, looks down, and sees there are three flies floating around in his drink. Three! Not one, not two, not three. And it's not as if we were somewhere where there was a lot of flies flying around, we weren't outside. Nobody else's drinks seemed to have a single fly in them. And Richard's drink had three. Which led to the funniest thing ever, which is uh, Richard saying, you can't even put three flies into one of those fake ice cubes because then people would realize it was fake. Absolutely. So Richard thinks three flies are too much in a drink, and I agree with him. What is my opinion as to the reason why the Chargers seem to disagree strongly with you in regards to clarity? My opinion as to the reason why the Chargers seem to disagree strongly with me. Um, I don't have an opinion because I don't know the reason. Does Mike Wint have the best hair in the NFL? He doesn't even have the best hair on the team. Uh, who am I thinking of? Ornberger? Rich Ornberger. Chargers. Let's see if I can find this picture quickly. Probably not. There was a picture of him from preseason last year. He had long hair. He had a luxurious beard. Uh, he looks like... Damn it, I'm not going to find it yet. But his hair was pretty much perfect. Not going to find it. I will find it later and I will post it. It is amazing. Oh, you said in the NFL. Yeah. Thank you, Cameron, for sticking up for Clipboard Jesus, who definitely has the best hair in the NFL. Am I back in San Diego now, or am I still living in the Valley? Still in the Valley. Do you think the Chargers should get new jerseys? Maybe do something like the Oregon Ducks did, adding black and gray, then adding an electric yellow. And I'm just done reading that. Wait, so you're not in San Diego? Yeah, I'm up in northern L.A. in the valley. It's only 5 p.m. here, still an hour and a half of sunshine. Are you in Hawaii? It's got to be Hawaii, right? Which non-obvious Chargers players are you looking forward to seeing improvement from this year? Non-obvious Charger players I'm looking forward to seeing improvement from this year. That is an oddly worded question, but I think I understand what you're saying. Um, Non-obvious player. Is Kendall Reyes obvious? I feel like Kendall Reyes is due for a really, really good year. Who is my favorite local... Los Angeles rock band. Yours, Donald, whatever it's called. I knew the name like two weeks ago when I was going to go to your show, and now I do not know it anymore. It's not a bad name, though. Whatever the hell it is. Hold on. It's probably in my calendar somewhere, unless I deleted it. If you were a shape, what color would you be? Red. Secondary. Jaleel Adai, Eric Weddle, Sharice Wright, Jason Verrett, Steve Williams. That's a speedy secondary, but we are small. I'm hoping that Brandon Gee stays healthy and makes a play for one of the starting cornerback spots. I do not see Brandon Gee being a starting cornerback. I know for some reason that puts me in the minority, despite the fact that the dude has never done anything in the NFL ever, and he's been around for like six years. Um, not sure I consider a die a starter at this point, but whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, 
when Tom Telesco said he was pushing for more speed, you probably could have assumed he meant the team was going to get smaller. You don't typically get bigger and faster. To the nines! That's the name of Donald's band. Apparently that makes me a scholar and a gentleman. I still need to see your band, but the name is awesome. Where's Gilchrist? On the bench, Richard. He's on the bench. Who am I rooting for in the NHL? Uh, Duck still alive? Let's check. Ducks are still alive for like another period. So, go Kings! I don't know. I used to be a Red Wings fan, and then I was a Flyers fan, and then I tried to be a Ducks fan, and that didn't really work out because I hated them too much because of Fedorov. So, um, I don't know. I guess Ducks, Kings, whatever. I kind of have fun when Southern California is rooting for an NHL team that's still alive in the playoffs. I wish someone would say what's up with Brandon Taylor. No one seems to know. Uh, as far as what's up with Brandon Taylor, I don't think Brandon Taylor's any good. Like, seriously, what did we get? Like, half a game from him? Was it that good of a half a game? I don't think Brandon Taylor's any good. Thought you couldn't have colors. Oh, you guys are still talking about jerseys. We have several Hawaii fans watching me right now. Hello, Hawaii. Hello, all 60 of you, actually, that are watching, but hello, that handful that are in Hawaii. Okay, Reyes is not obvious. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing vast improvement from Kendall Reyes this year. Gilchrist has to be the nickel. Don't see it. How is Steve Williams starting over Gilchrist? People are really upset about this. Gilchrist stinks. Like, Gilchrist doesn't have a position. He's not a very good nickel cornerback when you get more than three yards past the line of scrimmage, which makes him not a very good nickel cornerback or half of a nickel cornerback. And he wasn't a good enough starter that he lost his job to an undrafted free agent and a guy that couldn't ever get on the field. So I don't think you could look at Gilchrist and say, Gilchrist is a starting nickel cornerback because he's good at nickel cornerback. Gilchrist is good at jamming people at the line, blitzing, and that's about it. He can't actually cover anybody. It's a problem. Wasn't Brandon Taylor dinged up all year? Uh, not that I know of. Just kind of bad. He was on the inactive list all year. Do you support a soccer team? Still trying to settle on one. Uh, I tried a couple of them, but it's hard to get into. One of these days, I'm going to pick one and stick with it. Clippers choked last night, but they still have a chance. Yes. You guys have like a minute left to get your questions in. I mean, does he suck? Well, okay, he got hyped. Thanks for answer. I don't know what that's referring to. A day not a starter. The kid made plays this year. If anything, Gilly starts the beginning of the season, and Jaleel eventually takes over, in my opinion. No, I don't agree. Is Rivers on a path to the Hall of Fame? Jesus, that's a good question. Um... If this were 20 years ago, yeah. In today's league, probably not unless he can... The season he just had, he needs like six more of those, and he probably needs a ring. It's a good question, though. Is this the year Ladarius Green statistically outperforms Gates? He kind of statistically outperformed Gates last year. Oh, you mean like in terms of catches and yards, not like 
performance. You know what? I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say Ladarius Green finishes this season with more yards than Antonio Gates. I actually think the reasoning will be because Gates gets hurt, not because whatever, but I will go on a limb and I, I will say Chris Davis is going to make the roster unless he gets injured, and Ladarius Green will have more receiving yards than Antonio Gates this year. How about that? Does Verrett come in as the number one cornerback immediately, or is he number two, or even nickel? Obviously, preseason will determine this, but what would you... Preseason will not determine this! We went over this, damn it! Um, I think Verrett comes in as the... I mean, number one and number two are so similar. I'll call him the number two cornerback. What's the best thing that has happened to me this week? Oh, hi, Diana. Uh, probably when there was three flies inside of Richard's drink. That was really good. How much does Nickelback suck? You know, they suck a lot. But when they first came out, people forget it. When they first came out, before they were ever on whatever soft rock crap station plays them now, they were on like 94.9. This may have even been before 94.9 and been 92.1. They were on like the indie underground, like back when fuel was kind of big. It was like, this is the next fuel. And they had one song called Leader of Men, which wasn't the worst song in the world. I actually thought it was kind of an okay song. Since then, they've progressively gotten worse and worse exponentially. Gates had his best yardage season this past year since 2009. Good for him. Do you think Gates and Rivers will reach 100 touchdowns together? I'd love to know where they are now. Uh, but I'll go with yes. I'm assuming they're pretty close. 70-something at least. He did have knee surgery in December. Yes, Brandon Taylor did have knee surgery in December and then had, you know, eight months. He had, I think he had ACL surgery. And then, you know, the, but the thought process was he'd be back in halfway through the year. But yeah, you know, he could show up and they'd be like, oh, well, you know, he needed that year off because he tore his ACL or whatever. Looks like Cameron is taking my bet that I said that Ladarius Green will have more yards than Antonio Gates this year. It wasn't really a bet. I was just saying I was willing to put myself out there. The lyrics to every song I've heard is beyond terrible, is beyond horrible. Go find Leader of Men. I mean, I haven't heard it in like six years, but I seem to recall it not being the worst song on the planet. Yes, apparently I love Nickelback now. Oh shit, it's 819. I should stop answering questions. Uh, let's see. Besides Derek Cox, what do you think has been Tom Telesco's biggest mistake as a Chargers GM so far? Ooh, letting Vasquez walk is definitely up there. If we're going besides Derek Cox, it's got to be letting Vasquez walk. I don't know if that was actually his fault or just timing. I mean, free agency sort of crept up on him. He was hired not that long beforehand. Gates and Rivers have 87 touchdowns together. Yeah, I think they'll get to 100. Okay. I'm going to get out of here before you guys ask me more questions. Uh, it has been lovely, as always. I will likely be back here at 7 o'clock next Wednesday. In the meantime, I'm going to go drink more beer or go for a run or something else. Uh, sorry there wasn't much of a Chargers draft review here, but I hope you were entertained, and I hope you stick around for next time. See you.